Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Different, and welcome to Different Well. And for today's vlog, I'm going to be sharing with you all my audio interview with Woke by Accident with my girl, Jen Washington. I had a very good time talking with her today about my new uh, book, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift, which is, again, on pre-sale on my website. So, again, be sure to head over there once you're done watching this video. After you hit the subscribe and share and comment button, head on over to differenceworld.net and get your copy today. All right, here's the interview. Check it out. Hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. I am your host, Jan Washington. This is a weekly chat about socially conscious topics impacting the culture. I would like to extend my gratitude in you listening to this podcast. It means everything to me, and I hope it is clear that this subject matter is so important to me. I care about our people, our future, and making a positive change in this nation. <laughs> And welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. Today we have a special guest, a very special young lady who goes by the name of Different. Different is from Houston, Texas, and is joining us here today to share her story of how she overcame homelessness and foster care and to her life now as a college graduate. She holds not one, but two degrees, and she will be releasing her first book this month. It is called what if a controversial paradigm shift welcome to the show different thank you thank you for having me hello everybody out there yes, definitely i'm glad to have you now your pen name different would that be inspired by the famous tv show that we love no but i do like that tv show it <laughs> okay. was inspired by identity crisis if you will <laughs> okay d-i-f-e-r-n-t okay for sure and then you're from texas and in- Fifth Ward, what was it like growing up? Uh, let's say this. You can make it out of Fifth Ward, you can make it anywhere. They call that the quiet but deadly neighborhood of the north side mm-hmm. of Houston, Texas. Uh, that's the same place the ghetto boys are from. Have you ever heard of them? The famous uh, yeah. black girl, the ghetto boys? Yeah. yeah, that's the same place they're from. And so growing up in the 90s and, and just seeing that actual, I, I've actually, you know, witnessed, you know, walking down the street to school, you know, a dead body in a ditch. You know, so, it, it, the fact that, you know, when you get gunshots, it became normal. And um, it, it was tough, but, you know, by God's grace, I made it out. And, and, and the way I made it out now, I see that the situation I was in, it, it was just, you know, a hedge of protection. You know, me, you know, ending up homeless and then ending up in foster care. It's just, it was all part of God's plan, you know. You uh, mentioned that your family experienced homelessness. How old were you at that time? You know, me and my, my mother and brother, we ended up homeless. Uh, I was around the age 11 and my brother was around 12. And we just fell in hard times at that time. And um, for that time frame, for three years, we, you know, were basically homeless living everywhere. You name it, we stayed, you know, shelters, cars, parks, um, families, friends' houses, you know, strangers, you know. We even stayed at a crack house at one point, and that's just too to, to, to that point, that's when it got bad, and, and that's where, you know, God took me from that situation. And I ended up in foster care at the age of 14. I was you know, secretly placed in the system by a relative, and to where nobody knew, none of my family members knew where I was. And uh, for six months, the first six months being there, I tried my damage to come home. But, however, I found out, you know, that the state of Texas, they paid for, you know, kids who aged out of care their tuition fees for college so right there a light bulb went out of my head you know growing up in the streets you know I decided to use my my street smarts to elevate my book smarts and do out those four years in CPS and you know once I was done with that I was able to go to college ended up getting you know going to Sam Houston State University and got my bachelor's in international business I actually have two minors in business communication and economics as well as I have my master's in entrepreneurship I'm also a Texas real estate agent and, nice. uh, yeah I'm a member of Phi Chi Theta uh, business fraternity and so just it was just God's plan you know what I had went through in the past and, and, and the way that he had paid me back and blessed me you know <clears throat> I don't you know I hate that I went through it but I don't regret it you know because it made uh-huh. me the woman that I am today and um, even though I had so much success and so much, you know, achievements and accomplishments. You would think, you know, with all everything, you know, good going for me, 
I, I had it all together, but I didn't. You know, I was mm-hmm. a mess on the inside. I, I was a total wreck. You know, coming from a traumatized childhood that spilled over into my adulthood, you know, without because it was unchecked. And so, um, like I said, coming up from a tough upbringing and that much chaos, you know, witnessing that much, you know, you know, self destruction, you know, within my own community, you know, chaos was normal to me. If that sounds somebody out there that can relate to me, you know, they come okay. up in that type of upbringing. And when you get taken out of that, you know, at the age of 14, I was actually placed in, you know, actually nice homes and, and good school districts. And mm-hmm. for me, it was just too good to be true. I didn't think I was worthy of it. You know, I didn't think I was deserving of it. And so, or that it wasn't going to last long. And so I just convinced myself to, you know, sabotage and be the captain of my own ship and just mess up every other opportunity that I had. And so that type of behavior, as well as, you know, pushing other people away and being rude and off-putting me because I didn't want to let people in, those type of behaviors spilled over into my adulthood and to the point where, although I had all these accomplishments, I was doing all these good things and traveling and getting all these opportunities, I was basically squandering, you know, the most important ones. And that was an opportunity that I had one time to where um, I had a luncheon with a person who was just well-connected, was a, was a millionaire. And just mm-hmm. new people and, and taking places and, and, and just you, you just open up the door for me. And in the back of my head, dealing with these demons and telling me, you know, I'm not worthy. I don't deserve it. You know, I'm too country. I'm too ghetto. You know, they're not going to like me. And so I, I basically and purposely, you know, ended up going late to that meeting. And it left a sour taste in their mouth. And from then on, to this day, I still regret it. But, you know, the way that I, I felt to make up for it, was to finally admit the ugly truth to myself and accept the fact that I needed to fix my inner issues. I needed to go and get help. And so from then on, you know, I, I, I took my, my, I went to therapy. I basically took my to therapy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to, I don't, I don't want to come off as, you know, like a, like a little doll. I want to be real with you and tell you what was going through my mind. You know, I need to get my shit together. And mm-hmm. so um, I, I took my, I went to therapy. And so for two years that I've been in it now, and consecutively, and I'm, I'm proud of it, it has saved my life and changed it for the better. And so, and, and with that has come this book, you know, talking with my therapist who's become a, a great mentor. He's challenged me and encouraged me to turn all the negatives that I had from my past and just mm-hmm. turn them into the positives, you know, all the regrets that I had from all the, you know, squandered opportunities, you know, because I always knew that I was meant for greatness. I even told God and asked him a long time ago, you know, to allow me to be the one in my family to break the generational curse and create yes. generational wealth. And so he told me it can happen, but it ain't going to be easy, <laughs> you know? Right. And so, and, and, and years later, you know, 30 years old now, here it is. And so um, what happened was with being in therapy and, and talking with my therapist and, and, and picking up, you know, an old hobby of mine, which was writing and journaling, mm-hmm. uh, I was just doodling one day and then I uh, was stuck in the house. You know, this is the pan- doing, going on during the pandemic. Yeah. Stuck in the house, and then boom, you know, the death of George Floyd happens. And being from the place he's from, he's from Third Ward, and I'm from Fifth Ward, but I actually, you know, spent some time in Third Ward as a kid too, you know, moving around from place to place. We stayed in Third Ward for a while. And so being close to home and being able and having that opportunity to march and have my voice heard at that time, of course I wanted to get involved. I even wanted my nine year old nephew to get involved as well so he can understand, you know, what's going on around him and be aware of what's going on in society today. Um, however, uh, when it came time to uh, go into his funeral um, that day, like I woke up, I was ready to go, and I was like, mm, I can't do it. And it wasn't that I was scared or like got cold feet and, and didn't want to, you know, take that ride or you know, wait in a long line. Although I hate, I do hate waiting in line. It was deeper than that. Uh, I felt I wanted my voice to be heard longer than just in that moment of time. And so I wanted to, I wanted it to last longer after I'm gone. You know. And so being spiritually in tune, you know, with myself and person that prays and meditates and you know talks with God you know and prays on the spirit of discernment um, and just asking him what is it that I can do to you know have my voice being heard and put my contribution to society you know what is it that 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 that's going to catch capture you know the attentions of people around the world not just in America 
you know, what's what, what what's going to make their heads turn? You know, I, I ask all these questions, you know, talking mm-hmm. with God and meditating on it. And, you know, little by little, piece by piece over time, it come to me in dreams, you know, talking with people, watching things on TV, um, things like that. And, and then just one day, like I said, doodling and writing in my book and journaling, I just started writing, you know, what if, what if this, that, you know, what if this, that, and the other. And before I knew it, I, I started it in June 2020 and, and finished the book in December 2020. I contacted my attorney, mm-hmm. and she read it. She she thought the idea was great. She loved it, and she asked me a question that just blew my mind. <laughs> and I wasn't ready for it, but it, she just asked, you know, what's the name of your business? And I just was just kind of stumped. I was like, what, huh? I kept telling her my book, the name of my book. And she's like, no, I don't think you understand. She's like, you'll have to have a, a business. You would think a person with a master's degree in entrepreneurship, they would know all this, but I had plans for my degree in other ways. And so um, she said, well, you know, you'll have to have, you know, if you're selling a product to the public, you have to have, you know, a business. So they don't come after your personal gains. They can only go for your business assets. And so um, from that time on, from December up until March 2021, um, just praying, meditating, doing my research um, about you know, forming a business, and uh, like I said, being spiritually in tune and talking with God, I came up with Third Eye Entertainment LLC. Okay. Yep. <laughs> and so um, that's where the, the term Third Eye comes from, just being spiritually in tune with your Third Eye and just listening to, you know, basically your heart and allowing your mind to follow and, and it will lead you in the right place. And so basically what Third Eye Entertainment is about basically a business that tries to bring social awareness to society through mm-hmm. products and services that educates, inspires, and entertains all at once. We offer written and video material that touches on bases such as injustice, systemic racism. We talk about other social issues that's considered taboo, often swept under the rug, like sex trafficking, okay. suicide prevention, mental health, gender equality, women's rights, voters' rights, LGBTQ issues. We talk about all of it. And uh, I also have an uh, entertainment side as well to where I talk about um, my travel, my, my love for traveling with my hobby. Um, I've been to almost close to 50 plus countries. And I have a travel uh, blog as well, as well as a, a food blog that shares my experiences uh, with being all over these different countries, nice. experiencing their foods. And so I share that with the world as, as well. Um, however, the first actual uh, physical product that we have to offer um, to the public is my new book, What If? The Controversial Paradigm Shift. Okay, so that's the first project under Third Eye. Under the, um, the Third Eye umbrella, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so, and, and also, uh, and, and just to go back to our creed with being the, the strive to bring social awareness to society. We mm-hmm. also have a model that we live by that we try to teach the world, you know, during the midst of the pandemic is shed light on, you know, just that notion again that life isn't promised. And yeah, you know, whatever it is that you want to do in life is now or never. And so and this is what we try to show, tell our audience in order to, you know, achieve guaranteed success in life, one must manifest and speak into existence the things that they want and believe in. Secondly, they must plan for it is for whatever it is that they want to do in life. Third, they must prepare prepare for what it is that they're about to receive. So manifest, plan, and prepare is what I was telling you earlier. Um, but yes, going back to the first product that we have, Third Eye ENT, which is my new book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Before I go any further, I must, must, must disclose that it does include a disclaimer. It is intended for a mature audience. This is the reason why I came to walk by accident because this is like this is a podcast that can take me on some 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 tough topics. And so, with that, the book is strictly written to inform and encourage thought provoking and constant conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. This is done through graphic but provocative illustrations, and it entails on controversial deaths and events that have occurred in America within the African American community. The way that I have structured my book is set up in four main categorized paradigms, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. And within those four main paradigms, there are sub-paradigms that I ask the certain questions, you know, what if? So for instance, in the historical paradigm, I ask the historical question, basically in 1619, 
what if Africans started dealing in slave trading wherein they kidnapped millions of English men, women, and children from their homeland and brought them on slave ships to America? And I ask these type of questions in each of these paradigms that relates to situation that affects us in the political, the precedent, as well as the hypothetical paradigm. And so it's basically just asking the question, you know, what if this happened to you? This is set up in the race role reversal, uh -huh. you know, like the subject. And so I'm basically just asking the question, you know, what if this happened to you and your ancestor? What if this is still going on, you know, to you? You know, then what? How would you feel? You know, and if it's not okay for, you know, a white person, you know, to receive this type of treatment, then why is it okay for a black person? And so basically, again, just trying to push the envelope right. to, you know, encourage, you know, everybody to have that conversation, you know, especially those who don't want to. Another reason what inspired me to write this book is because I'm sick and tired of people, you know, saying, you know, or the racist people of the world stating that, you know, racism doesn't exist or that, you know, they don't see the color or we're the reasons, you know, racism is alive because we're keeping it alive, mm -hmm. you know, and so I, I got tired of, you know, those color blind, you know, people, if you will, and so I, I wrote this for them as well, you know, just to push the envelope, to ring the bell, you know, mm -hmm. what if, you know, um, as well as this book also, not only just hopefully, you know, I hope to encourage those to talk about it, but to plant the seed, if you will, you know, to encourage those to, you know, instead of systemic racism, how about systemic change? Let's work on that. Mm. You will. It may not happen for this generation, Jen, but what about, what if, what if this is a generation that plans to see for the next? That's what I talk right. about in hypothetical paradigm. Okay. This book also, you know, is, is my hope and, and, and prayers that it, it encouraged others to, you know, think about being compassionate for one another, being kindness and loving, you know, because we're all in one the same, we're human. You know, and we're all going through something, you know, within our personal lives, you know, be it, you know, our identity crisis, our finances, relationships, sexual orientation, we're all struggling with something. And so let's show kindness and compassion and love for one another, no matter what our race is, no matter what our religion is, no matter what our political beliefs are. Let's just, you know, start from there. Definitely. And, so, and I definitely want to take a quick minute to give Give kudos to you for recognizing like, hey, I'm dealing with something and seeking out therapy because I was thinking about, you know, you deal with a lot of heavy things that, you know, was a lot for one person, one young person to deal with. And so a lot of times, you know, it, it may just be something that hits you later on, you know, much later on. Well, thank you. That's thank you. still I something that, yeah. Is it something that you're thinking about doing? You know, do I, it. Um, <laughs> really? Let me let me stop you right there. You let recommend me, let me talk, it. Let me talk to you and your audience right here and now. Anybody out there listening to me, listen to me good and hear me well. Okay. If you're going through any type of depression, feeling suicidal, you know, you just you you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. You're not happy where you're at. Listen, it's okay not to be okay. Just don't sit there and not be okay. Go fix that shit. Go get help. And, and don't feel ashamed about it. One thing you should feel ashamed about is just sitting there letting yourself go to waste, you know, torturing yourself, being in that mental bondage. Free yourself because nobody else is going to do it for you. That's true. And so, and with that being said, whatever it is, whatever method you choose to do, you know, talking to a therapist, your fam, your fam excuse me, your, your family, friends, taking up a hobby, even calling the chat line, talking with them, shoot, they free. Call the hotline and talk with them. They don't know you. You don't know them. So you just talk with them about your problem that, you know, you're feeling sad and ashamed. Me coming up, what it was for me, Jen, is that I came up in that, that environment, you know, of what goes on in this house stays in this house. And so yes. you don't talk about, you know, you know what was going on. And, and, and so if somebody touched you, I'm not saying that that just happened to me, but, you know, if, if, an, an example would be if somebody touched you and even if you told you know, half of the time it got swept under the rug. Mm -hmm. So from there on, you were made to feel ashamed about it. And so even if you told somebody, nobody would believe you or nobody would entertain it, it wouldn't matter. And so it's basically, you know, just keep it to yourself, keep the bottom up. But those type of things, it spills over into your adulthood. It affects all of the good things that you have that's going for you in your adulthood. And so 
you. You couldn't control what happened to you as a child. As an adult, it's on you to get your shit together. You know, that's true. It's on you. That's you know, true. with mama and daddy, whoever did to you at a young age, you had no control of you over it. It's not your fault, but somehow, some way, it's now your problem, mm-hmm. and it's on you to fix it. Okay, and that's the ugly truth. That's the ugly truth that I had to face about myself. It wasn't my fault, but it's my problem, and I have to fix it. Right. And, and, and if I wanted all the, all the opportunities that I squandered, it was my fault. I kept trying to blame it on this and that and what I had been through, but it was my fault. And so I had to go in and fix that, and it was therapy for me. And then it can't be turned into writing. At first, it was traveling. When I first started traveling, I was happy about it, but I was also using that as a method to run away from my problems. So even when I would go all over the world, be in these beautiful hotels on these beautiful exotic beaches at night, laying in those comfortable beds, I would be crying, you know, because I'm by myself. I don't have nobody to share it with, you know. And that just goes to show money doesn't buy happiness, you know, having all these nice things. You know, I learned that early on. So even, you know, when the money comes, I know that it will provide that source of happiness. It's what's within that will give you that true satisfaction. And so, when you, like I said, when you're in tune, in tune with your spiritual side, your third eye, all that materialistic things you don't care about, it, you just release all of that. And, and within that, it comes accepting the ugly truth, getting real mm-hmm. with yourself, whatever it is, you know, that happened to you. Not even just in your childhood or you know, what happened in your past, in your childhood past, but even as an adult, things that, you know, you, you're going through as an adult, if it's still holding you back or weighing you down, you know, go fix it and then cut that loose. Process what happened, accept what happened, acknowledge what happened, and then let it go and move on because there's nothing that can be done about it. And right. I don't want to get too deep off into it. No, but I, let me but just, yeah. let me just, my main point, again, with that being said, anybody, again, out there listening, if, if that's, 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 even if you're not dealing with depression, you know some, somebody that is, you know, mm-hmm. Just reach out to them, tell them you love them, talk to them, you know. You ain't got to dig into their business, but just let them know that you love them and you care about them. It goes a long ways as well. Uh, but, but in any case, like I said, it's okay to be not not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. That's not right. okay, you know. And right. so go get help. And, and I'm glad that I did. And I tell anybody that listens and, and mm-hmm. even my family, sometimes they get mad at me still because I'm the first one. They're not used to this. And so... They still like, oh, why are you telling all our business and, and stuff? I'm saying, I'm, I'm telling my business. This is my story, and I'm sticking right, to it. Right, it's not about you. Nothing right. that I said and and saying is, is is false. It's very true. You can go <laughs> ask anybody about it. It's, it's this is my story, and I'm sticking to it. True story, if you will. And so, don't don't care about you know what your family or friends say or judge you for going to do what's best for you. You do you. Anybody out there listening to you. Right. And, 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 and don't give a, a oh, I'm trying to keep PG-13, so I don't want to speak to too, too much real, but, you know, don't don't give a damn what nobody has to say or think, especially, yeah. you know, your family or friends, you know, fixing and, and healing, you know, your hurt and pain explode, exposes their truths and faults, then so be it. That's their shame to deal with, not yours. Mm. You know, you releasing yourself from that burden, that mental bondage. And it's now their problem, their, their their issues to deal with. No longer yours. You you fixed you fixed yours. So, you know. Right, and that make brought me to a thought that you know dealing with what everybody like the, everyone's childhood. You know, you what you went through, and everyone has their own individual pains and traumas. And then we have to see George Floyd mm-hmm. and Mike Brown and Trayvon and all these other traumas. I got them all in my book. They're in Preston Paradigm. Really? So you were able to process those feelings through your book. Like I, in my myself, you know, I started my podcast right when George Ford was going on. This was my outlet to share. So, I mean, people have to deal with that public trauma of seeing another black person go through something horrible like that. I know. So that was, I, know, I hate that we keep saying that George way. Ford. We're going to call him the camel that, that, that broke, the straw that broke the camel's back, if you will, well, because I'm tired of saying that all of it. It's just, he, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was the one that made the bubble pop. And, right. and and for everybody, because, you know, I think what the difference with Floyd, George Floyd's death was, people watched it in live action. They had to watch this man die of a slow and agonizing pain for eight minutes and 49 seconds, you know, on live stream. 
you know, you, that's this type of stuff you can't make up. And so, like in until stuff, you know, the way it sparked, you know, encouragement for the civil rights movement, his yes. death, you know, is basically the Emmett Till's death of our time. It's yes, sparking it is. the change that it needs. And I want to be a part of that change and make sure, yeah. you know, you know, when I, when I get older and my grandkids ask me, you know, granted what you did for the, during the pandemic, where were you during this time? I'm going to tell mine, you know, hey kids, I was, you know, breaking a generational curse and creating generational wealth, you know, by writing this book that runs the veil of the world. And so that's what I want to be able to tell, you know, look back on and say, you know, that I just didn't sit back on the sidelines and look and watch time, you know, pass by. I want to be yes. able to say, you know, I was a part of that and here's the proof. Definitely. I think that's awesome that um, you explored that topic in that way, very unique. And um, I'm really interested to check that out. And so the book is available at the end of the month you mentioned, or? Yes. So as far as uh, the book goes, the pre-sale will start the last week slash beginning of the first week of September. You know, they kind of mesh together. So August 30th is when it should start. Um, You should go to my website, differenceworld.net, spell again, D-I-F-E-R-N-S-W-O-R-L-D.net. Okay. Uh, as well as, my, I must note, we not only provide services such as motivational speaking, we do also, in association with the book, provide other products, online products, uh, such as you know apparel, uh, other merchandise, including backpacks, t-shirts, sweaters, mm-hmm. what else, coffee mugs, bookmarks, and other things. Just go to our website and uh, you'll see that there it was listed. However, I must know that um, the other merchandise will not be available during the pre-sale, only the book will be. The okay. other merchandise will be available maybe the second or third week after the um, first week of September. Okay, for sure. So we will have that link posted so we mm-hmm. can, um, and I will be glad to support you and get the book. Yeah, so, yeah. We got to stick together. And yeah. first of all, let me, let's second, let me just take this moment in time just to give you and remind you, you know, that you have a crown in your head and that you're wearing it so well. And thank you so much for having me on your show. You doing your thing. Thank you. So keep it up. You know, I'm so I, I love seeing us, our people thrive and just coming up, you know, no matter what the circumstances are. And so that's just again what third eye EMT is about, just attracting and giving off that energy and that vibe of just having that come up. I always tell people, you know, I'm trying to have that come up like Cardi B or that come back like Robert D. And so like I said with twenty twenty, it showed us like life is not promised. And so for those who are working on that come up, you know, it's time to get rich during a pandemic or die trying. Okay. So exactly. I just, you're doing that. And so you keep going. Thank you. I appreciate that. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you want us to share? You mentioned you uh, wanted to share something. Oh, let me say this to the haters. I said this about this book. <laughs> I mean, let me let me address this because they fans too, if you will. Um, yeah, because although I am getting good reviews on online about the book, also bad reviews. You know, it's going to be good and bad, and that's the point of the book is to get you talking about it, whether it's good or bad. You know, your bell's been rung. But let me say this: um, for anybody out there that's saying that this book is used as this being, you know, used as a tool or was created as a as a tool to be used by the black community to encourage an uprising against the white community, stop that bullshit. It's not. This is simply, you know, meant to basically rattle your cage. It may piss you off. You know, well, my granny said it's always better to be pissed off than pissed on. So get over it. You will be all right. Um, as far as, you know, worrying about what naysayers say, one thing that, you know, I've learned from number 45 and other people that's full of that BS is, mm-hmm. you know, no matter what, it will always be somebody out there supporting and condoning your BS. So you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. So it's also something yes. I tell to the audience as well. Don't worry about, you know, trying to conform to anybody's, you know, idea of what you should be. You do your thing and what's right for you. You go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. So that's exactly what I'm going to do with this book. I'm going to go where I'm celebrated and not where I'm tolerated. So I know exactly, you know, where this book is going to do good at. And so that's where I'm going to go. Uh, sure. Other than that, you know, I also just want to take this time to give a special shout out to my nephew. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention you, my nephew, uh, who is a part of the book, my Pookie, my Seon, my best friend, um, as well as um, just send a quick uh, shout out and condolences to my coach, rest in peace, Coach Salsa Leeds, who passed away uh, last week due to COVID. And 
So mm. keeping your memory alive, man, just, just keeping your name by speaking your name, man, and, and wearing your shirt that got another mind. The Metro Fight Club for life. And so rest in peace, Coach Saul. He's in a better place, you know. You get your wings. You do, he came to this earth and did exactly what he was supposed to do. And he was well loved, well respected. Mm -hmm. And one thing he taught me and what I've learned from him. Um, I, actually, I actually do MMA as well. I forgot to mention that to you. I've been doing it for the past six years. Um, uh. And so what I've learned from him um, uh, is that in order to be the best, you have to do the shit that your opponent won't do. Uh -huh. And so that right there, I'm just, I, I always keep that with me in whatever it is that I do, even with this book, the way that I go on about it, how I have set it up. No, no person out there has ever done a book like this. It's truly uh -huh. different and unique. Awesome. Well, Hey everybody, welcome back. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed watching or listening in to my audio interview with Woke by Accident podcast by the host Jen Washington. Again, we had a very good time talking about my new book, What If? A Controversial Paradigm Shift, which I must take this time to thank everybody out there who's gotten their copies, within their love and support, and uh, people all over, man, are just finding out about this book, and I'm, I'm so appreciative of it. it. It just started, you know, just with a little pen and paper, and this is where we're at with it. So, again, Again, this is why I say manifest, plan, and prepare for whatever it is that you want in life, and it will surely come to you. Also, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, my segment on domestic violence abuse uh, prevention uh, month that we've done for the month of October. The next segment that we're going to be talking about is breast cancer awareness, so be on the lookout for that as well. Hope you guys enjoy. So again, uh, Difference World, come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619 Africans started dealing in slave trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift? It's a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America. Through graphic but provocative illustrations, What If provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical. What If, a controversial paradigm shift by author Different, Illustrations by Anastasia Arnold, coming August 2021. Go to differenceworld.net.